First of all, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this webinar about the solar PV for the commercial and industrial sector in Egypt. Uh, this webinar is sponsored by Longi Solar, the leading global energy company that is the only solar PV manufacturer with 50 gigawatts of modules manufacturing capacity. Very impressive. And we are prou very proud to have experienced panel today with us, having speakers from Stantink with their representatives from GFF Fund of EBRD, uh, and Cairo Solar, SEDA, Smart Energy Solutions, SES, Simply the Solar Company. And uh, I'm sure that we have a lot of people also with us uh, from the audience uh, from many different companies. And we were looking forward for a very interesting dialogue. Uh, if you cannot join us for Zoom, or if you have friends that wish to join us but couldn't do it through Zoom, they can watch us live on Solar Arabic's social media channels, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. They'll also see this broadcast live in there. So before we start, uh, just a couple of organizational topics. Uh, please let me know over the chat if you can hear me well, please, uh, just to make sure that everyone hears my voice clearly. And if you are on social media, please, in the comment, just write us that you can hear us well. Perfect. Rahma, Ahmad, Abdul Hamid. They say they confirmed everything is good. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. Um, now, I want just to notify you, please, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, Please send them in the Q&A section and not in the chat section. In the Q&A section, we'll be able to track these questions and to make sure that we will uh, answer uh, most of them. So um, first of all, we'll start uh, with um, uh, an introduction. Uh, my name is Munif Barakat. I'm from Solarabic, which is the biggest renewable energy platform dedicated for renewable energy in the Middle East and Africa. Uh, we do our web webinars in English, Arabic, and uh, French. Today's language is English, but if you have a question in Arabic, please write it in Arabic. That's fine. Uh, we will translate it and we will make sure that we will have this answer to you. So don't worry, you can always um, uh, shoot your questions uh, to us. So uh, introducing my esteemed guests today, we start with Mr. Felix Wu, who is the country head of Longi Solar in Egypt, which has 10 years of solar PV experience in sales and marketing. And he is in charge of South uh, Asia and MENA region uh, with a lot of focus on the DG market. Uh, we also have today Mr. Hatem Tofi, who is the CEO of Cairo Solar and the board member of the CEDA Association. He has honors, uh, he got with honors the BA in economics. He has an MBA from McMaster University in Canada, and he has worked in many senior corporate positions uh, before uh, Cairo Solar. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Ahmed Najib, who is the Chief Commercial Officer at SES Egypt, who has a demonstrated history of working in business, supplies, and equipment industry. He has a Bachelor's uh, of Science focused on Physics and Chemistry from Alexandria University. Next, we have uh, representing the financial side in our discussion today, Mr. Tamer Hanna, who is a sustainable energy expert at Stantec, and he's representing also the GFF fund of EBRD. Uh, Tamer is a holder of electronics engineering degree from the German University in Cairo, and he has a master's in renewable energy from the University in Ka of Kassel in Germany. Next, um, uh, last but not least, uh, Mr. Raif Faltaus, who is the CTO at, and founder of Simply the Solar uh, Company, uh, STSC, uh, who holds the bachelor's uh, degree, uh, Bachelor of Science in Mecha Mechatronics Engineering, and the master's degree in robo robotics. And he has been working in the renewable energy since 2017. My esteemed panel today will discuss multiple topics. We'll be focusing on the importance of CNI sector in Egypt. We'll be talking about the regulatory framework of the, for this solar uh, CNI segment. We will talk about the grants and the financing schemes that are available in Egypt for CNI and the different applications, whether it is on-grid or off-grid. And then also we'll be speaking about solar uh, as a very powerful solution for the energy demand for heavy energy consumers from the CNI sector with a very interesting reference project that plenty to discuss about. Uh, I will jump uh, directly into a couple of actually charts. I want to share with you a couple of numbers just 
So to set the context for today's discussion, before I hand over to, to my uh, guests, it is very important to know that uh, even though Egypt, uh, uh, energy consumption has not majorly changed in the last two, three years, as you can see, as per this chart. Uh, the growth has been around fluctuating around 0% if we talk about the energy consumption. But at the same time, we need to know that this uh, energy consumption comes from major sources, which are oil, gas, in addition to solar, wind, and hydro. Now, you might think that this has been, hasn't changed over the last couple of years, but it is totally the opposite. Because if we narrow down a little bit, and if we look into the electricity consumption in Egypt, we will find that the consumption of electricity in Egypt has grown steadily in a linear manner for the last 10 years and more. And that's simply because, like, is obvious from the electricity consumption per capita, which has over, I think, a, a, the period of 20 years from between 20 to between the year 2000 and the year 2020 has moved from 1000 kilo, kilowatt hours to 2000 kilowatt hours uh, of ele electricity consumption per capita in Egypt, which is a massive increase. Uh, obviously, the electricity generation has also increased in the same manner, moving in the, over these 20 years between approximately 100 terawatt, terawatt hours of annual production to approximately 200 terawatt hours, I think 193 terawatt hours of um, electricity generation in 2019. That's impressive when we look at it from electricity perspective, and we know that it will grow even further, especially with the new regulations supporting electric mobility, with the increase of temperature in the world uh, and the need, uh, more need for electricity for the cooling application um, uh, in Egypt, this will only grow and grow further. And that's why we need a solution for that energy mix. And that's exactly what Egypt has implemented over the last few years. In 2009, this is just a chart that shows you the difference yeah, in the change, the change in primary energy consumption by source. So uh, what sources we started consuming energy from more and which ones it got decreased in 2019. As you can see, solar and wind are the only winners in there. And they only, in 2019, Egypt consumed five more terawatt hours from solar, two more terawatt hours from wind, and then the, the, uh, and the consumption from coal, gas, and oil has decreased uh, significantly. So you can see that even though the total generation, the total energy consumption is stable, there is a lot of growth for electricity consumption, and obviously solar and wind are the winners in this game. In this last slides, and then I hand over to my guests, I want to show you some analysis that we did at uh, uh, Solar Arabic. Uh, Egypt is really one of like in, one in the top three countries in the MENA region. Uh, when we look into the solar in the CNI sector, Egypt implemented so, so far approximately 150 nine or so megawatts um, uh, and hits approximately 53% of the 300 megawatt quota, which is why my guests will speak about after a while. And this was done through multiple connection models, whether it is on grid with net metering systems, off grid with zero exports, we see we have Egypt has seen all of these applications. All of them contributed to that success, and the commercial models also varied between the EPC model, which is more of like capital capex intense uh, for the um, customers, where the customer installs the plant uh, and pays for it in the beginning uh, and then uses it for the lifetime of it, or the IPP model, where this is done through um, the developer that owns the plant and sells electricity to the customer and the customer would pay for this as they go and this becomes rather than a capex exponential becomes an opex one definitely every one of them had its own success and failure stories we will hear this also throughout the presentation uh, today so very strong one of the top three markets in the MENA region for cni sector uh, in solar pv um, uh, there are multiple models that are implemented in egypt and that's exactly what i wish to share with you today uh, and uh, to do that first of all i'd like to welcome uh, uh, 
and Lonji is the sponsor of this webinar. I would like to listen more about the success Lonji had in the last few years, and then also Lonji's take on the CNI sector in Egypt and in the countries around um, uh, before we move forward to our next speakers. So Felix, um, please, if you can share your screen, would be very happy to uh, listen to you. Uh, it is an honor for us to have Lonji Solar today on this webinar, sharing their experience with us. Thank you, thank you, Minif, for the kind of introduction and uh, no good morning and good afternoon to all the audience and uh, to all the speakers. I'm very glad to be on this uh, webinar. So I hope that I would be able to meet you very soon in Egypt. But now due to COVID, I think we have to do this kind of a webinar through, uh, through this form. So uh, I'm going to have a short introduction about Longi Company first, and then I will uh, be looking forward to the interactive discussions with all the speakers. So I would like to uh, start my presentation with the uh, company's uh, slogan, which we say that we, say we are customer-driven company and we are solar technology company. So I'm going to focus on three points. Uh, capacity, quality, and uh, bankability, which are the three criteria which would be very much important for the uh, customers to select the motors. So fortunately, a few key facts about uh, our company Longi. So in the year 2020, Longi's uh, sales income is 8.4 billion. And out of this, we have uh, made 400 million USD into the R&D investment which is around 5% uh, of our sales revenue. And uh, totally, Longi has uh, 60,000 global staff. So you can see that Longi has been uh, nominated by Fortune China as a top 500 company, and also by third party Goldman Sachs and also Forbes as the leading companies in the world. So a little bit more history about Longi. Uh, as you can see that we started our business in the 2000 from the semiconductor industry. And then we entered the solar PV industry in the year 2005. And in the year 2014, Longi became the world's largest already monowafer supplier. And we started to enter into all the solar cell and motor production business. And in the year 2015, Longi, only after year, one year entering the so the motor business become the largest shipment company in the modern motors only. And in the year 2019, we will say we have entered into the stage four where we are using the solar technology to power the earth. So as you can see that we have launched our standard M6 wafer and also M10 wafer last year. Also in this year, 20. 20, Longi has joined three important organizations. One of these is IU100, which Longi commits to use 100% green electricity for our own factories and our office by the year 2028. Also, Longi has joined the EV100 and the EP100 initiative, which is all of the uh, green initiative. And uh, earlier this year, Longi has also built on hydrogen division to promote wide use of the solar energy so as you can see that each milestone of Longi has accelerated the industry development. So right now, Longi has five divisions. We started from the wafer business and then we entered the solar motor business. And also we have in China, we have the IPP and also EPC business. And also of course there is a hydrogen business which is started this year. So as a shared with you that Longi started entering into the mo uh, motor business in the year 2015. And you can see that in the year, the motor market share is only 18%. But with the year going on in the past six years, the market share of the motor motors have increased to 56% in 2018. And uh, by last year, actually the global market share of the monarchs line Models have already reached 90%. So Longi has used our technology innovation and put that into the mass production so that it brings the RCOE to the lowest for all the customers around the world. So here is the R&D investment which Longi is putting annually into our 
technology uh, R&D. So you can see that uh, Longki has put it around between five to seven percent over the past ten years. So this is why it made Longki's uh, technology very advanced. So the future of Longki would be sustainable development strategy. So as we have introduced, we've drawn the three important organizations, IE100, EB100, and EP100. And our visions for the uh, energy would be that by the year 2015, the Earth can enters into the carbon negative mode, which means 100% renewable energy will be able to power the globe. So this is our long-term vision. So now I want to introduce a little bit more about the three elements which Longi uh, want to share with all the uh, audience, which is important for the model selection. The first point is the capacity. So the, uh, you can see that Longi has shipped more than 58 gigawatt modern wafers last year. And uh, this is the first solar technology company to standardize all the tech, uh, wafer cutting technology into diamond wire solar. And uh, also from the motor side, Longi becomes the only company who is able to ship more than 20 gigawatt motors in last year. So actually the exact figure will be 20.53 gigawatt last year. And also because of the uh, demand is so high, we also made our capacity expansion into 50 gigawatt by the end of last year and the beginning of this year. So as you can see also that uh, uh, we have a regional office in different parts of the continent and also here in the Middle East and Africa region. We are also going to set up an office in Dubai this year. So as said that uh, Longi has become the largest uh, motor shipment company in the world last year. And this is our capacity expansion plan uh, as shared with you. So we are going to uh, meet all the demand of the market. Second point, quality, which is uh, the most important point which we'd like to share with the, all the uh, audience that uh, Longi has been rewarded by many third party organizations in all the uh, quality, sta quality standard and also the power generation simulations and also the outdoor testing. And uh, you can see that PVER, IETC, and PV Magazine all highlight Longi into the number one position for the quality. And all this quality has been realized by our R&D and our technology. And also to share you one example of Longi's technology, we always try to find a balance between efficiency, cost, and reliability. So here is a smart soldering technology of our Hymo 5 motors. So here we're using a uh, three section triangle uh, ribbon and a flat ribbon to connect to the cells. So you can see that we have been able to reach a small gap between the cells so that the motor's efficiency can be realized. But in the meantime, the motor's cost can be in a reasonable level. The third important element would be the bankability of the company. So uh, Longi is very proud to be seeing that we are the leading financial heresy company. So it's highlighted by Bloomberg New Energy Finance, say that Longi's uh, m and growth is the highest in the industry, which means Longi has the best financial strength and means that we are able to provide the long-term bankability and also long-term uh, assurance to our customers who buy Longi motors. Here, you can also see that the bankability ratings by PV Motor Tech, where it highlights Longi as the only AAA company in the PV motor industry. And also Bloomberg uh, BNEF also highlights Longi as a 100% bank brand in the world by all the mid banks. Okay, so the first point uh, to share with you are the product uh, offerings from Longi. So we have the wide range of uh, solar motors to satisfy to different application scenarios, which means for CNI and also for utility. So we have HIMO4 and HIMO5, 
which could be catering to the utility projects. And especially for the CNI business, Longi have a Hammer 4 motors. We have a three product range, 60 sales, 66 sales, and also 72 sales to cater to the different dimension of the roof and the different uh, uh, shapes of the roof. So below is the power beams of the motors. So that is able to meet all the DG projects requirements. Also for your information that uh, all our motors are available in both monofacial and bifacial. So what's the next product from Longi? I'm going to share a few information about our newest product as well. So earlier this year in June, Longi has broken three world records with our new solar cells. So three new records with the uh, always with uh, N type, P type, Topcom, and also with HDD, which is the newest technology in our R&D. A little bit more information about this product is called Hemo N. And the product highlights is uh, we are using N-type Topcom high efficiency performance cell technology, which can deliver highest energy yield. It's also using the M10 standard wafer, which can have the optimized dimension of the motors. And the motor power beam can reach up to 570 watt with 22.3% motor efficiency. So we believe that MOM product will be able to deliver the lowest RSOE for the utility power plants in the future. So a short summary about the key points, why to choose Longi as your partner. So the first point is that Longi is the largest producer globally with 50 gigawatt motor capacity. The second point is that Longi's product reliability is the highest so we, we are recognized by TV year and also IETC model index. So the point is that uh, our bankability, where Long is the only AAA rated motor producer in the world with outstanding RMZ scores. The first point is that we can provide you with a comprehensive products to satisfy different applications. And also, of course, important that uh, we also have a new generation N type Topcon for the future projects. The longer you want to become your preferred partner, and we will provide you the solutions, we can provide most value to you. So last point, I'd like to share a few product reference for you. This is a 250 megawatt in China, and also it's a big floating project in China. India, one of the largest projects in Vietnam, USA, Mexico. And also here, I would like to highlight one of the projects where Long has done in Egypt. It was a commission in the year 2018 and 19. Total project uh, capacity is 390 megawatts, ground mount uh, solar plant in the Benban Solar Park. Also, we are uh, in cooperation with the uh, customers in Egypt for the CNI projects uh, with 10 megawatt plus. Uh, in the process. In the uh, third point, I'd like to also highlight that Longi has been cooperating with our local distributors to provide solar motors for the pumping systems where we have already supplied more than 30 megawatt in Egypt. So I'm very happy that we are able to sat uh, satisfy the demand and really looking forward to cooperate with more partners. So thank you very much. This is my uh, presentation and uh, I look forward to the live discussions with all the speakers. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Felix. I really appreciate this. Thank you for sharing launches. It's interesting to see your growth and the reference project that you have, because especially the Benban project was at that time 300 megawatts was 390 megawatts was the biggest bifacial project in the world uh, at that time yes. and uh, it's interesting that you are active from agricultural sector up to utility scale and would like to get back to you later uh, with this now um, before I move to our next uh, speaker Mr. Hatem I'd like first to um, uh, get to know a little bit our audience a little bit better you will see now a little uh, poll showing up on the screen. Just tell us, please, from what country do you 
button at the video uh, in the comment section. Just write your country or region. We would love to know where you joined us from. Once at least 50% of people answer this question, then we'll move forward. Okay, 52% of people joining us are from Egypt and approximately 30% from the Middle East. So we have hundreds of people watching us between Zoom and uh, social media. So very happy to have this, this many renewable energy professionals and people interested in this uh, industry and to know you even a step more better. It will help us to customize this discussion. Please let us know from what industry you come from. If you choose this, please, on your screen now and tell us from what industry uh, you join us. People on the social media, please write us as well. Our team is gathering your feedback. Send your questions, write them as comments on social media if you have these, these questions and we will definitely bring them up during this discussions. We already have here six questions in the Q&A section. So looking forward for a positive discussion. 34% from EPC. Uh, we have 8% from developers. We have 6% from uh, commercial industrial sector. So potential customers that are interested into this. We have manufacturers. We have people from the financial sector. We have 7% from utilities joining us. That's a huge variety of audience where we are, we guarantee you that today you will learn a lot. We, we throw out this session and uh, we are looking, all looking forward to enjoy this uh, discussion. So I invite then without further ado, um, uh, Mr. Hatem Tofi, who is the CEO of Car Cairo Solar. Um, I'll show a couple of slides that he prepared for you and kindly please introduce yourself and Cairo Solar and also help us to better understand the regulatory framework of the CNI segment uh, in, in Egypt with focus on that segment below 500 kilowatts, please. Hi, Monif, uh, and thank you for uh, this uh, lovely webinar and uh, how organized it is. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, I would start with the uh, regulations part, of course, and then uh, my fellow team member, my fellow, uh, 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 companions will, uh, in the APC industry will talk about uh, a lot of other details. Uh, so I will give you a quick brief about Cairo Solar. Uh, we started as soon as the regulations started um, in 2014. Uh, one of our actual uh, companions here on the board is, was actually uh, with us uh, on the team as well, Mr. Tamir Hanna, who we go, we we owe a lot of our technical expertise to. Um, uh, we were the first company uh, to help a client in this villa right there uh, to uh, connect to the grid and sell uh, with uh, feed-in tariff uh, to uh, the grid. Uh, since then, Cairo Solar has switched more to the commercial and industrial sector, and we've done uh, about 60 projects for a total of, of about five megawatts of uh, solar plants. Uh, and about 99% of them is actually uh, grid connected, grid tied. Uh, our expertise is providing uh, loans uh, with low interest for factory schools and hotels uh, to help them um, save electricity. And this electricity saved would be equal to the installments they pay to uh, the bank. After five years, of course, the, uh, then they save all the electricity to, the, to themselves. And I will leave the IRR uh, to, to uh, engineer Tamir Hanna to speak about. Um, and next slide, please. These are some of our projects very quickly. Uh, one of our uh, favorite projects is Haya Academy. <clears throat> it's here in New Cairo, uh, where actually most of the solar companies are concentrated in. Uh, it's about a 400 kilowatt uh, project and it saves about 30% of the school's um, electricity. And there are many other projects with factories. The next one is uh, they produce uh, electric motorcycles and uh, there are other many other projects as you can see. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, the most important part where we talk about uh, the regulations uh, of the Egyptian market. Uh, and especially the on-grid. 
Uh, as I said before, in 2014, uh, there was a feed-in tariff uh, law that came out, and this is where most of our companies in Egypt were established. There are over 200 uh, registered companies in uh, Egypt, uh, EPC companies, and uh, we started installations to help clients sell electricity, whether it was in Ben Ben or uh, in homes or factories. And then in 2017, the regulations developed a bit and the net metering uh, happened, especially when electricity prices increased. So it made sense uh, to start installing net metering. And then in 2020, the net metering was updated and there were specific quotas that were uh, uh, that has uh, uh, that, that were put in play, uh, and uh, right now there is about for companies that want to install uh, through an EPC model, where the company itself, uh, the utility company, factory, school, home, want to own the stations themselves. As you said before, capital uh, uh, the ca the capex based model. Uh, there is a quota of 125 megawatts that is allowed in Egypt uh, as well. And uh, at the beginning, of course, there was a mergering fee or a uh, net metering fee uh, that was installed in 2020. Uh, but uh, uh, at the end of the year, all the companies that, uh, that all the clients that want to install under 500 kilowatt stations are exempt from this fee, which, was, which is a great incentive and it keeps the IRR of the station uh, very high. And also a self-consumption model, we are awaiting a quota to be given so that, uh, you know, very capital intensive uh, companies uh, can, install, uh, can install solar uh, and uh, companies like, uh, or institutions like hotels that, are, that always have a load that is always uh, consistent. They can do a self-consumption or as you said, the zero uh, export uh, model. And, uh, uh, the regulations in Egypt overall are very welcoming and they are, uh, they are extremely, uh, they, they help the IRR uh, of the solar, in uh, solar industry, especially that we have zero tariffs on solar imports. So if, for panels, we have 0% tariff and then very small tariffs for other products uh, that uh, are about 2%. Uh, the Minister of Electricity has been the has been the same. He has the one that uh, he's the one that um, put the laws in 2014, and he's the one that has been adjusting them to suit the market uh, and to help the solar industry uh, grow, as you have very uh, eloquently eloquently has, uh, have said. Thank you, Munif. Thank you very much, uh, Hatem, for this, um, uh, let's say, brief introduction about the regulatory framework for the CNI sector in, in Egypt. Uh, I'm, I have a lot of questions myself, uh, especially I want to get back to you about this quota and the reason for this quota and what do you see as solutions to expand the CNI sector even further in Egypt. But we'll we'll go through the round and then get back to you and we'll also gather some other questions from the audience. So thank you, Hatem, for this. I will move now to Mr. Ahmed Najib um, uh, to please give us your point of view as an EPC um, um, uh, regarding the CNI segment in, in, uh, in Egypt, telling us uh, what makes a good um, uh, EPC company, what are the models that you implement after we spoke about on-grid, off-grid, what, what have you done so far and what do you see is the future for the CNI sector in, in the country, please? Thank you. Of, uh, of course, we would like to hear an introduction about you, about SES in the beginning so, so that people know you. Okay, thank you for uh, the opportunity Welcome. to be a part of this uh, Discussion and also I would like to thank the sponsor, uh, Longi. Um, SES is one of the leading companies uh, in Egypt for the solar uh, sector since 2008, where our start with uh, uh, energy efficiency. And once it comes to uh, the fact in Egypt in 2012, 2013, uh, the problem of the electricity, the lack of electricity, shows on. So we try to 
get uh, uh, a way to solve it. Uh, as our main name is Smart Engineering Solution. So um, our first project was installed uh, in off-grid uh, sector, um, especially in, in the pump, solar pump uh, project uh, to supply uh, irrigation system with electricity. Uh, moving to the uh, regulation that appeared in 2014, like uh, Engineer Hatton such uh, mentioned, we already uh, have been credited from Narea and we uh, renewed our license twice till now. Through this uh, six years from uh, have a regulation till now, we have been involved in a list of projects in uh, commercial and industrial and specialized in industrial, which is very critical because you are dealing with uh, many types of uh, mentalities, many types of uh, experience, uh, Japanese, uh, French, um, American, all are coming with a uh, background for the technical uh, special. Now we are running um, our projects uh, almost at 10,300 megawatt uh, uh, peak yearly for our projects. Uh, we were uh, involved also in the Dan project for three pots uh, uh, as an APC. Uh, how we can identify the project is better to go for on-grid or for off-grid. Let's focus on the on-grid. On-grid, that's mean we are grid tied. If the project has an electricity and he want to make savings, the best way is to have his net metering solution and to connect with the grid as much as he can regarding the space, regarding the, the law and the regulations. However, if we are in another project with no grid connection, definitely we will go for the off-grid. And off-grid, that's mean uh, I will uh, depend only on the electricity produced from the uh, renewable energy or hybrid system with diesel, like BV diesel. So, Given examples for the on-grid uh, project or solutions, uh, with, uh, which are uh, the, the more uh, efficient, like schools, universities, for example, because they have uh, a peak, a day peak uh, operating. Also the factories, they have a, a day peak. Uh, and weekend, they generate power and export to the network. Then they get it back when the exchange of the metering is Calculating. So um, the future for the uh, uh, application, such like uh, schools, universities, uh, 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 factories, are very promising. It's all about the quota uh, that we mentioned in the regulations. Otherwise, a huge market in the off grid in the agriculture uh, is still existing, especially that we are. Uh, uh, reclaiming now more than 2 million Fedan in Egypt under the national project uh, of one and a half and the new project for new Delta. All of them will be powered by the uh, solar energy, which is a very good potential to the companies, to the clients, to have their own green uh, resources for energy. Um, I hope if I have explained enough the, the difference between the off-grid and the on-grid and the application different applications. Okay, perfect, thank you. So uh, do you see also that this off-grid could be a way to overcome this quota that you have on the on-grid uh, projects? For sure, for sure, yeah, because uh, uh, let, me, let me tell you, 60% of the market, the existing market now is in the off-grid in the irrigation system. Mm -hmm. So we did it ourselves. We transferred from the uh, uh, commercial and industrial to the agriculture. Uh, for sure, we cannot compete with the small scale uh, projects in agriculture, but we are focusing uh, on the mega projects to transfer the experience that we gain from the uh, commercial and industrial to be implemented in the uh, agriculture business. Perfect. 
Perfect. Thank you, Ahmed, for this um, um, explanation about these different applications in the CNI sector in Egypt. We'll definitely get back to you for more insights, uh, especially from the EPC role uh, perspective. Uh, I'll move now to welcome my next Amir. Hello, Munif. Can you hear me well now? I'm sorry. Just let's try it. Yes, I can hear you well. Thank, uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Tamir. We're, we're looking forward to hear an introduction from your side and to tell us a little bit more about how to finance projects in the CNI segment in, in Egypt. I know that apart from the regular financing, there are some grants and some supporting facilities um, uh, available in Egypt, a variety of them, actually. We would like to learn that from you today, please. So uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Monique, for this lovely opportunity and for this webinar and for all the great uh, uh, partners we have in, in this webinar. And so first, let me just introduce the, the facility that we're talking about. So mainly we're talking about GEF, and GEF stands for uh, Green Economy Financing Facility. So, uh, and it's, it's financed under the EDRD and GCF. Uh, so basically, the, we have two different facilities in Egypt, okay, under the, the GEF. One is the normal uh, facility that everyone knows or it's been uh, running for three years almost. It's GEF Egypt. It's a uh, $160 million facility uh, to finance renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. Uh, it's divided between three local uh, PFIs, which are, which are the local banks, uh, the QMB and the Alex Bank and, uh, uh, and the African Bank. Uh, and there is another one. It's the MBE GEF. It's been running for for a year now, it's been launched last year. It's a $200 million facility. It's for financing renewable energy, energy efficiency and water uh, management and also uh, sustainable land management. Uh, so these, uh, these two facilities basically, they, they, they provide financing. And I'm gonna explain uh, which kind of financing and, uh, and the differences between them. And before, before I go into details, uh, of course, so these facilities provide financing and the GEF Egypt uh, provides financing and grants. And uh, so before going into details, I just uh, wanted to uh, highlight the, there is also uh, a grant, uh, another grant uh, that of course uh, the, uh, Dr. Hin was there, she would have talked about it. It's, it's the EGPV grant. It's under the, the UNDP, United Nations Development Program. This, this grant or this program, it's called EGPV. It provides uh, with a maximum quota of, if I'm not mistaken, $15,000 for a maximum of 100 kilowatt project. And of course it has uh, some certain conditions and terms. So this is uh, also to, to, to explain to audience that there's also another grant, but it's only a grant. Uh, and it's, for, it's, it's very helpful for the, for the small and a bit medium scale project. Uh, so now moving on to the uh, GEF uh, facilities. So, uh, so basically these facilities, the, of course, we, we finance private companies, uh, only private companies, of course, not, uh, uh, not public companies. And we have some certain criteria. For example, the, the GEF Egypt, the, they have no limit for the type of company. Uh, it could be small, large, uh, or medium. Um, and of course, the, the, the financing and, and all the terms and conditions and all the rates are according to the, to the uh, Central Bank of Egypt. So, uh, and of course, everyone is going with the GEF because especially in the solar uh, sector, because of the, the grant, it's 15% uh, or 10%. And now mainly it's going to be 10%. Uh, of course, depending on the project, it, it, makes, uh, it makes anything, of course, uh, uh, more feasible. So all projects are becoming more and more feasible especially like uh, my dear uh, colleagues have said, the, the IRR and the feasibility of the projects in Egypt, whether in the off-grid or in the on-grid in the CNI sector, uh, it's becoming more and more attractive and everyone is going forward with it. So, uh, so you can imagine with the financing, uh, whether it's gonna be uh, the CBE uh, initiatives, which is the 5% or the 8% interest rates. And if you apply a grant uh, with that, calculations of core projects are, uh, are attractive to a great extent 
so uh, so yeah so uh, now i can tell you a bit more about the uh, the, the term and, and of course uh, projects with, uh, with different currency can be also financed, of course, depending on, on the type of the company, if the company has uh, hard currency income or not. So also it can be financed. And uh, not only, like I mentioned, the, the solar, so in the CNI, some, some borrowers, they, they would like to uh, finance the, the whole project, which means the solar and other components for the energy efficiency or in that, in that regard, in the, in the MBE, which is National Bank of Egypt Bank, uh, they can provide also the irrigation system and, 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 and water management and water treatment. So uh, these solutions can, can be very useful for a turnkey project, for especially in the irrigation and the, the solar water pumping projects. Uh, so this is, this is just a summary for, uh, for, for these facilities. And of course, I would like to, uh, I'm, I'm open for any questions. And I just want to give you like some numbers about the projects that have been financed, for example, that we have like now more than 41 or 42 projects uh, financed or in the pipeline, I think more than uh, with more than 40 million uh, dollar uh, finance. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, of course, if you would like to hear about the IRR later, I would be uh, I'll be open for that. Perfect. Thank you very much, Tamer, for these insights. It's very interesting. So uh, I, I'm just answering quickly a short question that we received. Can you please repeat the names of these facilities? Because people are interested to learn more about them. Yeah, uh, GEF, it's uh, the Green Economy Financing Facility. So we have two GEF, GEF Egypt and the NBE GEF, uh, which is the National Bank of Egypt uh, GEF. Uh, so uh, these are two uh, different facilities, but they are under the EBRD and the GCF, so uh, uh, so yeah, and then and of course they have different uh, terms and different uh, requirements and and, and inputs and, and and of course, yeah, solutions. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much, Tamer. Uh, Rahma Karam, I hope that this answered uh, your question quickly. Uh, in order not to f lose the sequence in here. So thank you, Tamer, for this uh, summary. Uh, now we're moving to a very exciting topic to learn how not just small companies can benefit from solar PV, but how m uh, big energy consumers like in the steel industry can benefit from uh, solar PV and how is this actually being done in Egypt and that's what uh, Raif Faltaus will tell us from the simply the solar company uh, in this section. So welcome Raif if you introduce yourself please a little bit your company and tell us about yeah this topic please. Okay good afternoon everyone thanks Mr. Monique for your kind introduction. Uh, actually I'm Raif Faltaus uh, I'm the CTO of uh, simply the solar company um, we have uh, one of our mega projects is a steel factory, Bishai Steel, basically. Uh, it's determined to do a few megawatts project, okay? Uh, it's like, it's a big project, actually, in the in steel industry. The steel industry is a dense usage uh, of energy, is a dense use of energy, actually, because of the melting of iron and refabrication of the scrap metal and everything. Uh, thus leads to its uh, initial demand for even at the downtime for uh, energy. Uh, thus they decided to get into the solar field and start, decided to start implementing the solar. However, we're, we were facing uh, difficulties that we're facing into implement, implementing this kind of, uh, in, into in this kind of work is due to several uh, reasons. One of them is a legislation process and steps to be taken for uh, this kind of a project, because basically the steel industry uh, takes its input or its uh, incoming electricity is from the UHV. Uh, in order to use it for their, uh, uh, for their furnaces and everything, okay? Thus, the UHV has a several steps, hello? As a several you steps uh, for, okay, uh, have a several steps into getting it into uh, a medium voltage. Thus, one of the main problems is not everywhere you would find a low voltage or a medium voltage, even in order to uh, commission on it your solar station. This is one of the problems that we face. 
thus with the planning of the solar station on rooftops of the industrial sheds that we do uh, it takes time planning for the electrical connectivity uh, into the factory because basically uh, you have more of uh, uh, 66 kV or 220 kV into the factory rather than finding a 400 volt uh, low, low voltage, I mean, uh, into the factory. Thus, uh, it leads to some, not a normal commissioning ports like uh, that we used to into a normal factories as we do, okay? Uh, and this is it basically. Uh, in our company, simply the solar company, adding to that, we have our factory for the mounting structure, aluminum mounting structure and our own entity of installation and uh, uh, commissioning, okay? Um, those companies uh, integrate with each other in order to provide the best solution for this kind of a customer, which is a bit tricky because you need to have a certain custom-made stuff in order to proceed forward with this kind of a project. This kind of a project is basically wherever it's applicable in order to apply net metering to it, Okay, which is above 500 uh, kilowatts. It's, uh, it requires to legislate in a very long process and takes time. And even if it's going to be a zero expert, as Mr. Ahmed Nagib has implied and Mr. Hatem Tawfiq before me uh, implied, uh, it's not really certain where it is now, where we stand in Egypt from it in the legislation step. However, we're working on it totally into uh, making it a zero expert scheme in order to uh, um, deduct this kind of energy uh, generated from the electricity uh, consumed, okay? This would lead into a further uh, discount, uh, in a, into a faster ROI or SDOE, uh, because basically here you, uh, you compensate for the reactive losses of the factory and the reactive power of the transformers and the step-down process. Thus, it would be more efficient. And here is where the tricks are, uh, basically. Uh, this is it. Um, maybe then I will show them. Uh, I, I knew that you want to show a little bit the project, a couple of photos from the project, if you can just tell us in a minute yeah. about it. One them, of the photos is actually. OK. Uh, one of uh, one of uh, one of our problems main problems into applying this kind of uh, a solar factory into this uh, into this field is O and M and the cleaning actually. Thus, in our own R and D department, which is a pretty humble one actually, uh, we started manufacturing our own robotics in order to start implementing them on the, the roof sheds in order to integrate the cleaning steps in order to be uh, faster and more applicable and more organized rather than using uh, a manpower uh, and uh, neglecting the human error actually. Uh, and this is it basically. As we can see, we are not short on, to, uh, on the area to install upon it on the industrial sheds because the steel industry basically uses a very big uh, industrial sheds. Actually, our biggest is almost one kilometer long by uh, 200, kilo 200 meters wide. Uh, and this is it, basically. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Raif. Just Lynn, to re-emphasize that these cleaning robots are manufactured in Egypt, and uh, definitely they solve an important problem, which I will get back to you later once we start with the questions. Uh, thank you, Raif, uh, for this uh, overview about the importance of solar and the role of solar in the CNI sector. Uh, actually, I want to thank all of the speakers for their punctuality. We, we planned to finish this main part within an hour, and it is now 57 minutes, so we're doing very, very well. And we have 30 questions prepared for you from uh, uh, our attendees. So we'll start, we'll move into the discussion, please. So I'd like to ask uh, our esteemed panel to switch on your cameras, please. We miss you, want to see you again.
and uh, move into the questions uh, phase. Uh, first of all, I will start with you, Hatem. Hatem, you mentioned in the beginning that um, about the ROI of these of these um, uh, CNI projects in Egypt in the less than 500 kilowatt uh, seg segment. And you, I remember in our previous discussions, you, you mentioned some kind of tax uh, issues that could be there that I wish that you please highlight them to us and tell us what can, how can we make the CNI projects in Egypt even more profitable um, uh, with some regulations changes or, um, or subsidies that you think could be helpful? Sure. Um, that's a great question. So th there are two main issues, as you said, the taxes and the subsidized finance. So uh, the tax issue is that, as, we, as you have said, there, there are EPC companies and then there are developers um, who own the station and do IPP or PPA, power purchase agreements with the government or IPP as an independent power producer to private clients. And in both cases, they get taxed at a 5% VAT tax. So whether they purchase the solar, the solar panels and all the other equipments from uh, the lo locally or they import it, they pay 5% tax. That means that uh, uh, the station, let's say, the, it, it, it would cost, let's say, 100 pounds or 105 pounds. Versus EPC, uh, EPC companies, they get taxed at least at the 14% value added tax. Uh, and sometimes it goes up to 19. So that increases the price of the solar station uh, uh, dramatically to the client. And it makes the IRR lower. Of course, it's still high, uh, but it's, uh, it, it makes it lower than the 5% uh, tax. And that's why we highly recommend uh, and we request from the Minister of Finance and the Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry to apply this tax reduction. Obviously, this would lead to decrease in tax, uh, uh, tax collections to the government, but at the same time, in the long run, it provides great, great, great savings uh, to the country and it alleviates the uh, 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 the dependence on uh, fossil uh, fuels. Uh, the second part is the uh, subsidized financing. There are uh, certain um, uh, subsidized financing, whether it's 8% for industrial or sometimes 5% for, for the agricultural. Uh, but uh, it would be great if there is a specific uh, subsidized financing for solar, whether they are big solar projects or small solar projects, they all end up uh, giving uh, benefit to the Egyptian economy. And that's why if there is a specific uh, solar uh, subsidized financing for 5% or less, um, that would also uh, lead to great benefits to the Egyptian market and it would increase the IRR uh, or the return on investment for all uh, EPC uh, clients. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Hatem, for this answer. I think uh, this leads us probably also to l l hear ab about this topic from the perspective of the financer. So I will ask, please, uh, Tamer, uh, if he can just provide us an overview or like kind of what do you see as an IRR actu actually in the projects in Egypt without uh, grants or subsidies and how this improves after getting a grant from GEF, for instance. Okay, thank you, Muif. So let me first just identify the, the different types of projects and classify them. So if we're talking about the about off-grid projects, of course, they are the now they are the most feasible because when you uh, calculate the IRR, you compare to the diesel costs, which are very expensive now, and uh, the, the O and M costs as well. So, uh, so for example, uh, the projects that, if, uh, like, I think now the, the solar pumping projects, the off-grid sector, uh, the IRR could reach easily 25% without even uh, financing or, or any grants. Uh, and this is, this is a very even, like they say, uh, uh, business as usual model or scenario. Uh, and also sometimes they could go even, even higher. Uh, if you're talking about uh, on-grid uh, projects, uh, grid connected, uh, now we're going to compare to the uh, grid tariff, which is of course less than the diesel uh, costs. So projects could reach also, depending of course if, if this system is a rooftop system, 
I mean, the, our, our ground mounting system. So depending on the mounting structure, if it's uh, a flush system, it's going to be cheaper. So we could say our, our could range between 20 and 23% or 22%. But of course, these numbers are, uh, yeah, are real and accurate. But of course, before the, the, the increase in the panels, and, uh, and, and of course now uh, it's going to even increase more, I think, with the, with the problems or challenges that, that the world is having. Uh, especially with the supply of, the, of panels, uh, and so with now we're we're moving. Uh, if you have a financing solution or a grant, so a project, for example, I'm giving an example for a project which was five megawatts, uh, maybe an off-grid system. The RR reached uh, 29% with only uh, maybe also 30% with a very humble model, and it was only with financing and 8% financing, depending on, according to the CBE initiative. So it was 8% without any grant. So it was like 30% IRR. And uh, on-grid system without uh, without any grant, with only financing, that was uh, more or less 25% uh, to 28% uh, with only financing of 8% as well. And so, of course, projects would be uh, with the interest rate financing of 5%. And of course, these interest rates are uh, different according to the type of the company asking for the loan and uh, according to requirements and, and, and conditions of the CBE. So each company has, has to match a, a certain uh, model to take, uh, to, to, to take the according, uh, accordingly uh, the, the specified interest rate. So numbers would range between 25 and 28% for projects on grid system. And so if you apply or apply the, fund, the, the, the grant with the financing, I've seen projects uh, with interest rate, of course, uh, uh, with the IR going even higher than 30%, which makes sense. So if you have a 10% cash back uh, on, on your system, so it's like 10% discount. So uh, so if you're going for uh, an off-grid system uh, with interest rate 8% and grant 10%, interest, uh, the IR could go even uh, 35, between 35 and 38%, and the on-grid systems also between 30 and 35 depending on the system costs and locations and uh, and, and, uh, and specifications and everything so these are like uh, some some uh, some some numbers and highlights on the, on the feasibility uh, of the projects and it's still even going more feasible of course depending on the system costs so in the off-grid system because the costs are even are lower and uh, compared to diesel prices so uh, so the feasibility is of course the best in the off-grid systems the on-grid still very feasible but of course uh, we're going to see with the with the with the new prices in the solar panels that's so thank, uh, th thank you thank you tamer it is actually impressive to see that still in a mature solar pv market actually that you achieve 22 23 per, uh, percent irr without actually grants or subsidies but if you get a grant you can even hit the 30 percent which is actually very very high in such a mature solar market uh, yeah. definitely very interesting i think for investors and people of, that are thinking to invest in solar in in egypt so thank you for this uh tamer and this brings me to uh, not uh, let's say to an interesting question to felix so tamer said that maybe Maybe because of these high modules prices, the IRR will go a little bit down. So <laughs> how it's we hear about this always. So modules are expensive, expensive. So are do you think that modules today are expensive, or would this be the norm more moving forward? What's your opinion? Okay, so thank you, Minev, and also thank you, Mr. Tamir, for the figures sharing. It's very, very impressive. The figures which uh, you have just shared, twenty-five percent to. 30% even without grants. So this is a really, really lucrative figure. So I think it's, uh, if this is the kind of interest rates which is available available in Egypt, the C9 and offer grade business will soon, I think, get more shares in Egypt. So regarding your questions about the model prices, I think uh, I'd like to share two points. The first point is that uh, the model prices actually has uh, dropped 90% in the last 10 years. So from the long term, the model price is on the uh, obviously decrease side. So that we can find the greater parity in many parts of the world already. And also I think in Egypt, it's uh, also going to be happening in the maybe next two years already. 
And the second point, which I also want to say is that uh, last year, I think because of the COVID situation, many supply chains uh, got disrupted. So firstly, the polysilicon materials uh, uh, prices uh, went more than three times from June last year to this year. So this is the primary reason which drives the uh, motor prices to be high. And uh, because of the motor demand and the uh, solar industry will continue to develop, actually the supply chain is already reacting to this situation. So you can see many news in China that uh, the polysilicon suppliers, uh, even some motor suppliers are entering into the polysilicon uh, joint venture to stimulate, to stimulate the expansion. So by the end of this year, the polysilicon supply will be very much enlarged. So by 2022, the whole situation of the supply chain will be very much even. So I would say that next year will be a good year for the prices to be uh, keep the normal range. And this year already now the motor price is already stable. And uh, besides this, I also think that another factor which is impacting the prices is the shipping cost because of the many uh, un, uh, how to say unimagined uh, uh, imaginary factors like the real estate blockage of the uh, ship and also because of the uh, COVID situations, the shipping cost has increased a lot. But uh, I think uh, by next year, situation will be very much better. And now it's already under control. So I'm very much hopeful that the situation will be very good for the solar industry in Egypt. And also based on your figures, 25 to 30 percent, I think even with the current price and even with our current experience, the projects in Egypt are still continuing, especially the solar pumping business. So I'm very much uh, hopeful for that. Perfect. Thank you, Felix, for this uh, answer. We're looking forward yeah, like to the market to stabilize. And, um, uh, and now I'd like to switch a little bit the topic, yeah, like involving now, please, um, Ahmed and Raif, please. So I'll start with you, Ahmed, from EPC perspective. Um, uh, what makes a good EPC or a quality EPC? So we, we hear a lot about, or we see sometimes images of some bad installations, wrong installations, or an installation after a little storm that has flown uh, off the roof. Uh, and of course, that's a huge investment, especially if we look into the agricultural sector, that's a huge investment for farmers into a solar plant. And uh, it is really bad to see this just disappearing in one night. So what really makes a good EPC and why should uh, our customers in the CNI sector focus into working with reliable and strong EPCs? Ahmed, um, if you are on mute, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Ahmed, can you hear me? Okay, um, until Ahmed could hear me again, then I will then, uh, as I said in the beginning, would like to also ask the same to you, Raif, um, uh, especially that you've been working on a huge rooftop um, project installation. And would like to hear also from you that why would um, the customer needs to care for having a strong EPC? And how did you actually make this decision to invest into implementing robotic cleaning solutions, which is obviously more expensive, yeah? And, um, uh, and that's a higher investment for your customer, but definitely they have done it for a certain purpose or certain benefit. Can you please explain this case for us? Okay, basically what differentiates between uh, a good reputable EPC and the others is uh, how they operate on site, uh, the way they operate on site, the way of mobility of, uh, of uh, panels, of mounting structure and stuff like that, especially if it's on a higher ground, okay, like not on a ground level. Uh, and if on ground level it identifies uh, as if they did their uh, work on uh, the soil or the soil analysis and the ground and, and stuff like that, in order not to have some sort of a geographical or uh, 
or anything like sand movement or sand layer movements and stuff like that, like uh, preparing the land properly or preparing the or preparing the uh, rooftop properly. Okay, applying the HSE code, which makes the workers feel safe uh, at their environment while working on the rooftop uh, or on the ground level from electrification, from getting electrocuted or or getting uh, any kind of uh, uh, a major or minor accident on site. Okay, thus it would help in order to make the worker feel safe and it would make him like uh, do his job properly, like tightening the screws properly with a proper brass panner or something like that. Uh, thus it would yield to uh, uh, a better product. And at the end of the day, also what has a major concern into finalizing the product or pro providing good value for your money is choosing a proper material to be uh, supplied and procured, like a proper panel uh, type, uh, uh, a proper mounting structure, a proper cabling and stuff like that. In order at the end of the day, it's a long-term project. It's, 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 it supposedly lives like 25 years without a major, uh, without a major uh, O&M actually. And this is it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Raya, for these insights. And I'd like to ask Ahmed, please, to complement this answer from your side. Like, what would guarantee the quality to the customer yeah, from an APC company? OK, I'm sorry for the problem with the connection. But um, in firm on, uh, uh, on the discussion uh, from a financial way, if we need to achieve the uh, financial statistics, we need to uh, uh, get a good quality to uh, prove that the quality of the uh, station will produce electricity. There's no electricity like planned or designed. So the IRR will go down, payback will be uh, uh, corrected. So ABC is the main key. The E is the engineering, to do a value engineering. When the client want to uh, uh, get a valuable project, he has to choose a good, company to make the engineering, the value engineering, also the B, the procurement, smart procurement through a, a, a well-established network of suppliers for PV, for inverters, for structure, for everything was after sales services. Also the contracting, which is including a lot of uh, scope to be covered, like HSE, uh, like uh, experience uh, uh, workers and now bef because of Bemban we have many workers with experience in Egypt which is a worse so uh, in an atmosphere uh, uh, with the standards uh, uh, entities like Jeff and Egypt PV stands I, I think I believe it's a, a, a lucky uh, uh, atmosphere for the clients in Egypt because of such entities pave the road for them to choose the good uh, uh, APC and to have uh, a worth of uh, their projects. Um, that's that, that's the main the main uh, uh, results from uh, having such entities in Egypt. Uh, we were benefit not only the clients but also the APC because I have a, a, a route to follow. Perfect. Thank you, Ahmed, for these insights. It's good to hear this from the EPC perspective. And I, I would like to also have a third opinion on the same topic because the quality topic is very important and it is the key guard for the investment of the customer to have a, a quality installation on the, for the customer. And I want to hear now, please, to hear from the uh, manufacturer perspective, Felix. What makes a quality uh, solar component, yeah, with focus definitely on solar modules uh, and why it is important. Okay, so I think Mr. Ahmed has just shared the important sign uh, from the engineering, which is the EPC part. So Longi as a manufacturer, we believe that uh, three factors are very key to the success of a, a project for the long term. The first point, of course, is the product uh, reliability. So as you can say in my presentation before, Longi always say that quality is a primary concern for us. 
And this is also why long we always do the best quality for our customers because oh, if this project is uh, installed and the commission and then later on you find quality problems, I think the loss will be huge and uh, you cannot uh, get the desired IR for sure. The second point, which I also uh, believe is very important is the company's bankability because the solar plants is for 25 years for the utility and also even in some cases for 30 years. So if the manufacturer would not able to be lasting for 25 years, then how you can assure that the plant can be uh, safe for 25 years? I mean, so this is why I say uh, bank, bankability of the company, uh, of the motor equipment is very important. This is also very important for the EPC company because if the manufacturer is not over there, then it's difficult for the EPC company to do the O&M uh, service in the, uh, in the later stage. And the third point is also uh, very important is that the reliable local service, because uh, most of the production I think today is uh, located in China, but the demand is uh, in Egypt. So to have a local partner, reliable partner, distributor, and the EPC partner uh, is very important for the customers so that they can provide the reliable service and also O&M and also technical support for the customer over there. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Longi will be able to cooperate with all the uh, partners and also with the, the potential uh, customers. Perfect. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Felix. And um, uh, now I think we can use the coming five minutes to answer some also questions that we have from the Q&A. We answered 20 questions in written uh, to people uh, that asked us. So first one, Raed Jarek, who's asking, what does the EPC stand for? So it is uh, engineering, procurement and construction. So that is what uh, we are referring to. Next question that uh, I wish to ask is from Sarah Mustafa. Uh, probably this is a good question for Hatem, as you mentioned the uh, uh, self-consumption quota. And the question is, when do you expect this to be announced? And do you know what are the estimates for this quota uh, so far as being discussed? Uh, right now, uh, we unfortunately, we don't have uh, a clear idea when, uh, uh, sorry, uh, how big the quota is for self-consumption. Uh, but we will, you know, we could assume that it will be as big as that meeting at least. And uh, when is also a great question. Uh, we have no idea. The, the, there should it should have come out uh, last year, but uh, they, uh, due to COVID, uh, there has to be some assessment. Uh, there has to be some assessment on how uh, uh, how this how the self-consumption quota will affect the network. Uh, and that's why it's still under study by, I, I, I assume it's DMV. Uh, so we still are waiting. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the answer. Yeah, uh, then we wait. So if it is unknown. Uh, next uh, uh, question is from Rahma Karam and it is directed to Hanna, to Tamer. Um, uh, so Tamer, please, the question is, uh, actually, there are two questions. Is these are these grants from GEF uh, are dedicated to solar PV, or can they use them for other renewable energy technologies, yeah, like wind or biogas? And the second question is, can they apply them for a residential sector installation? Yes, thank you, uh, thank you for the questions. Yeah, of course, the first one, uh, these financing solutions and grants uh, could, of course, be uh, used for uh, different. Renewable energy technologies, so basically solar, wind, or 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 uh, biomass. But of course, let's let's be uh, let's be realistic. So projects of the wind projects in Egypt, especially, they won't be uh, because uh, one of the, the the requirements and one of the the terms of the, this facility. So each company has like uh, investment ceiling of five million dollars uh, for the financing and for the grant. So uh, so we're talking about wind, uh, not a very Big scale of wind in the small or medium scale, and in, in that in that range we're talking about. But of course, solar and uh, and, and biomass are more relevant. But of course, if, if someone has a wind project, of course, can be financed as well. Of course, and of course, fuel cells maybe in the future. And uh, this, uh, regarding the second question, if, uh, if I'm not 
uh, not mistaken, uh, regarding the residential. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, right now, no, the, these financial solutions could not be applied to residential uh, uh, or retail clients. But in the future, yes, there is a plan to include the, the retail and residential uh, projects uh, because it requires different solution, different financial solution and, and, and criteria. So uh, right now, no, but in the future, hopefully very soon, it will be uh, included, yes. Perfect. Thank you for Thank this, uh, Tamer. Um, uh, I will ask the next question quickly. Sorry for moving that fast, but I'm trying to answer as much as possible. So the next question is from Dr. Abdurrahman Bubrek. Uh, thanks for attending the webinar uh, today. And the question comes as follows, a bit long, but uh, I think it, uh, we can get to the point uh, pretty quickly. It is very well known that the total capacity of power plants in the Egyptian grid is around 50 gigawatts, which is more than the annual consumption of around 35 gigawatts. So do you think that the implementation of renewable energy in Egypt will continue increasing in the coming years, or would it decrease as grid uh, stability issues uh, start or potentially start. That's the first one. Uh, not sure if Ahmed, you can hear me? Yes. Yeah, so that is the first question about like, would the grid, grid stability issues limit how much renewable energy will be connected to the grid? And the second question from Dr. Abdurrahman is um, uh, that you mentioned that the PV market uh, in the off-grid is higher than on the on-grid for CNI. Then uh, the question, why is the cost of kilowatt for the off-grid still very high? Okay, uh, may I ask for, uh, for definition of off-grid again? And mm -hmm. off-grid, the common off-grid we use to know is uh, off-grid with battery, which is still more expensive than the, the, the on-grid, okay? But uh, the potential I mentioned was for irrigation with, without battery. And this is definitely is cheaper than the on-grid systems. And the payback, and, uh, and the Samir can confirm this, payback for the irrigation system is uh, uh, they've done uh, three years. However, the on-grid is between four and five years. So the IR is better, payback is uh, lower. Uh, so uh, using uh, batteries or storage, uh, or even uh, a hybrid system like diesel with the uh, off-grid system, is still expensive because of uh, the additional uh, tools we need to uh, uh, install. Perfect. Thank you for this uh, answer, um, uh, Ahmed. And uh, we have answered so far 34 questions. I want that we answer the 35th and then we close the session for today. And uh, the last one would be directed together to please to Raif and Felix. And first I will start with, with Raif. So uh, you are talking about uh, multiple or tens of megawatts that are installed on rooftop in Egypt for uh, Bashai steel. So can you just tell us a couple of key challenges that you have for installing such a huge project on rooftop? Okay, first of all, the legislation, because uh... Just the legislation of uh, connecting a project on a UHV on UHV grid is uh, pretty challenging. In order, in, or, in order to have uh, either uh, zero consumption or a uh, net metering scheme applied on a UHV, it's not applicable in, in order to have a net metering. Thus, you need to have it on uh, a zero expert scheme. Thus, in order to have on a zero expert scheme, you need to have some sort of a dump loads in order not to export anything beyond a certain point, adding to that the power meters that we have it that uses the PID technology and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, the the implementation itself. The implementation itself uh, it, it takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of working upon it. Like the engineering in, in at it, it's uh, pretty dense. It's not like a normal engineering because basically. You have sheds that's few kilometers or few hundred meters big. Uh, thus, you need to plan it properly in order any kind of mistake would result to some sort of a deflection of the panels for, for hundreds of meters. Thus, it would be really tough and tricky. 
the final thing is uh, uh, the frequency of uh, uh, applying maintenance and detecting the faults and uh, the other stuff like that and the cleaning itself it's uh, hectic because it's not easy, easily accessible although you do some sort of walk walk path walks and everything however uh, it still needs to be uh, applied to it uh, a proper hse code applied to it, other stuff and in order to in order and you need to have a very well trained and capable uh, workers in order to eliminate the human error however still that happens uh, thus we decided to have our robots and stuff like that and we're trying to implement some sort of uh, detecting the faults in the system or detecting the panels or doing some sort of image analysis or stuff like that with robotics and stuff like that. Uh, however, it's taking time from us, uh, thus we're working on it. Uh, the last thing is uh, through the implementation, I use my own company for implementing the projects. I don't have subcontractors for it. Thus, uh, during the implementation, uh, you need to have uh, a safety talk with the workers in order to guarantee that you're not uh, putting anyone in danger because at the end of the day, maybe someone doesn't know how to, 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 to have a certain contact with a medium voltage or even high voltage, how to work around a, a, a substation and stuff like that. Uh, that's mainly the main uh key points that we face and challenges uh at the steel industry in shaisti perfect thank you for this input Raif. and now i want to please to ask uh, felix to complement this answer and tell us from the manufacturer perspective how do you help Raif? how do you help ahmed and you help hatem and the, all the other epcs to have an easier installation of solar on the rooftops and i know that longi has a very unique product in this regard Right, thank you, Malif. And uh, it's wonderful interactions with all the panelists. And uh, as the last point, I want to compliment to all the discussions that uh, Longi as a manufacturer, we are very much focused uh, on our expertise, which is to provide the most uh, leading technology and with the best product reliability to the customers. So in my uh, opinion, uh, Longi and all the uh, uh, EPC companies, we should be partners. So we cooperate together to uh, achieve the target set by the Egyptian government, which is 35% uh, or 42% renewable energy by the year 2030. So in this process, I think what Longi would like to contribute is that we can use our uh, technical expertise, which say the forces product, uh, leading product technology with a reliable quality, and also second point is that uh, we also want to contribute our technical expertise with the EPC companies like Mr. Ref and also Mr. Ahmed. So for example, in your designing of the project, CNI projects, I think our technical team can also help you to do the design. So if you have any questions, we can discuss and our R&D people can also be involved to, to, to avoid that point. And also I think in terms of the questions which was raised in the process of the project, like Ralph has mentioned about in the steel industry, you have to uh, think about the cleaning problems. I think this was not met before because normally in off-grid or in uh, like a fabric factories, you do, do not meet such problems. I think it's normal to have a new problem coming, but with the industry to grow, I think uh, the, this means more opportunities. Like Mr. Ralph can now produce the uh, robots by themselves. So it's a new business for the solar industry. So I think this will further contribute to the Egyptian uh, economy's development. So in the end, it's very much promising in the Egyptian uh, Sendai market. And uh, Longi would like to work with all the uh, customers, with all the EPC partners towards that. So I'm very, very, very much uh, looking forward to that. 
Perfect. Thank you very much, Felix. I appreciate your answer. And uh, now we are two minutes over time, so I need to close and wrap up uh, pretty quick. First of all, I want to ask uh, our esteemed speakers today, starting from Hatem Tamer, Ahmed Raif, and Felix. You are all have been awesome. You've been uh, you all share the same passion about the CNI segment and the solar future in Egypt. That's what we all believe that has very high potential in Egypt, and it is. Not not just a beautiful story. It is something that is being built every day, kilowatt by kilowatt on many sites. I'm sure as we are speaking, somebody is installing there plenty of kilowatts all around the country. So uh, we invite everyone from outside of in Egypt to consider this investment in Egypt. And um, uh, especially after we have seen this very high return of an investment that was mentioned throughout this session, we are happy to have uh, our sponsor today, Longi, with their very high quality product, the biggest producer of solar panels in the world with more than 50 gigawatts of capacity. Uh, that's really impressive. I wish to, uh, to thank most importantly, our attendees, the hundreds of people that were with us today on, on Zoom, the people also that had to leave earlier, we will send you the recording so you can see the rest of the session later. People on social media, thank you for the interaction today. I wish you all a very beautiful, a sunny day so you can make more and more kilowatts out kilowatt hours every day. So thank you very much. And till we speak the next time. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much for everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.